What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In the last episode, you saw the motor come out of the BMW 700, get the clutch issue fixed, which was crazy that all the parts were here, nothing was broke, everything could just be reassembled with the new parts, put back in, and we're back and running. So we are ready for Daytona Turkey Rod Run next week. For the first time, I'm taking the 1960 body drop bagged BMW 700. So I think this will be a really cool car to take down there, to cruise around with all the hot rod boys. It'll be the only BMW 700 down there, especially body dropped and bagged. So we are now ready for a turkey rod run. Uh, as I'm recording this, we leave in one week. So really all that's left to do is some servicing on the truck, basically just a once over on the OBS, maybe an oil change, trailer's ready to go, and a lot more news about what we're also doing on the Daytona trip, because we're coming home with a car too. To not get too ahead of ourselves, I'm not adding a long-term project to the shop, but we are bringing back the next giveaway car. I think you guys are gonna be super excited about it. But today, in today's episode, we are finally back on the auto union. I think in this episode, I'm finally going to finish cutting what's left of the body out to finally get it set down over the beetle pan where it needs to be. Now I started filming this episode way back before we hit the road in the Porsche 924S and then I just got immersed in preparation for that trip and then ultimately SEMA and kind of had to stop at that point. So basically in what I was filming there was installing the drop plates from my good friend Max at Everesto in England. And as you can see, these are now mounted. I took the five inch drop plates out that were in there for just mock-up purposes. I knew I wasn't going to use those spring plates when we ultimately bagged the beetle pan. So Max at Everesto has come on board to be a part of this project and I cannot be more excited. Max makes some incredible air-cooled Volkswagen bag and static suspension components. So make sure to check out Everesto on Instagram. Max is gonna be a huge and vital part to this project. The Everesto spring plates are in, torsion bars are out finally. We are now free floating inside the torsion tube. There's no bar in there and we are completely full drop. What we're gonna be doing is cutting the rest of the body out because a lot more needs to be cut out in order to set this thing down where it needs to be. And I'm worried about the rear window. I've talked about this in previous episodes. I wanna run a 17 uh, because of how tall the front arches are in the Auto Union 1000 SP body. These are 15s with small tires and already we're getting dangerously close to the window. For how far down I want the body over the pan and we're going to the ground with the body. I want to cut the pinch welds off. I even wanted to cut this part of the rocker off to basically allow this back part of the car to be closer to the ground. Um, but we're getting closer to this window as we set it down. So I think today will be the final say as to whether or not the window's actually gonna be in the way for laying the car out on 17s. So what I think I'm gonna do today, because I only have two wide five wheels with this size tire, the other two have these giant balloon tires and they're way larger than 17 inch tire diameter that I'll ultimately be using. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the laser machine, see if I've got enough plywood here. I'll design on the computer in CAD the wide five bolt pattern, cut a giant center bore for the center of the hub here and make an overall laser cut plywood wheel simulator that I can set the pan down on. And that'll give us an overall idea how far up the tires may go in the front and the back. So what I have to do before we do that is get the leaf stack out of the front. We got a leaf stack on the bottom and a leaf stack on top in this beam. We'll pull those out. We'll just throw the control arms back in so they can now have free range of motion. So when we set the pan down, that'll also show us where the drum will ultimately be when it's aired all the way out. So we'll get to that. I'll probably start on the computer and work on the wheel simulators. But first, mega news, huge news for the shop. If you guys are OGs, I mean, I shouldn't say OGs. I've really only been on, been on YouTube for about five years. But if you guys know me, if you followed me on Instagram for the last 10 years, and if you've been here since the beginning of the YouTube, you know that my best friend, Corey Marshall, has been a huge part of my travels working on some of the cars, uh, BMX. About two years ago, I made the move from New Hampshire, where Corey and I are both from, down here to Chattanooga, Tennessee, to start my own shop, basically. I worked out of my father's shop my whole life, and this was me stepping out to build my own shop out, which is incredibly hard because I don't work on other people's cars. I run my laser machine making merchandise for income, 
and working on the cars in a shop where I needed to buy everything was incredibly daunting. So the last two years have been forged in fire for the most part. So the big news is Corey is going to be a part of the shop here at Ludwig's Garage. He's finally moved here to Chattanooga, Tennessee. And with the help of you guys being supportive here on the YouTube channel, on the Patreon, just anywhere, even in just real life, going to shows and talking to people. And if you guys buy merchandise and buy shirts. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm on the computer. My laser can't really cut three quarter inch plywood that well. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize the laser to just etch the stencil of the five bolt PCD center bore and overall outside diameter and then just use my jigsaw and a drill to basically cut everything out. All right, so first of all, Corey's here. Hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> we basically just got right to it. That wasn't really the plan, but it was the plan. <laughs> I really need a laser that'll just like punch through three quarter inch plywood because we'd, we'd have them. The laser would already cut them, but. Uh, all right, well we have some wooden wheels and they're kind of round. Oh yeah. The PCD uh, design was on the money. Nice. But these are done. I think what we'll do is we'll pull this off and um, we're gonna pull the leaf stack out of the front beam so we can get this to articulate where we need it to be when the pan's laid out. So that's gonna be our next step. It'll be a greasy step. But Corey's worked in an air-cooled shop before too, so he's probably pulled more stacks than I have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got the leaf stacks out. Out of the front. Job, someone's <laughs> got to do it. Now, all of you air-cooled guys obviously have noticed these are stock spindles. So these aren't drop spindles, hence the control arms being straight up and down. But this will allow us to get the pan somewhat level on the ground, and we can figure out where the wheels are going to end up, up inside. So we're going to drop the body down now. We'll get the pan lined up and we'll start marking some stuff in the body and we'll start cutting. This is what we're looking at. And in a few past episodes, you've seen this. This is a 15, right? This is no bueno because this is the top of the deck lid basically and the window is right here. So it looks like there's room. But we gotta take, yes, yeah, sir. We gotta say, take I'll this hole. We gotta it. take this. We gotta take the top of this here. Almost just go like. Yeah. That. Just for now. This side in here is sitting on top of the tire. I might have to go a little more. Yeah, up here true. To, to where it flattens out more. Yep. Maybe even up here. Yep. And then build off the flat if, if there's room. Yep. Yeah, we'll start there. Yeah. It may all have to go. The tire may yep. come up to here or yep. more. Yep. So what I was thinking was, yeah, if we've got to use that as our baseline, we, we still have a little bit more room to go from here if we have to box that in mm -hmm. and tub it. I know where we got to cut up front too, so we'll make some marks up front. Mm -hmm. We'll put the body back in the air. We'll probably just roll the pan right outside, and then we can uh, pull the plasma cutter out and just chop a good chunk of stuff away here. It looks like the front is significantly far forward now, uh, simply because we don't have drop spindles and those control arms have rolled forward a ton. They're almost straight up and down now. Since we're on the tires, I, f I fit a lot of this first without the tires on. And now that we're sitting on the tires in the back, we kind of need to cut a lot more out. So I haven't talked about it much in a while, but huge shout out to Prime Weld uh, for sending me the Cut 60. I uh, bought their Cut 50. That's their entry level plasma cutter. It'll cut up to half inch steel in it retails for like 260 bucks or something crazy. So I don't have a discount code with them or anything, but hit up Prime Weld for the Cut 50 if you just need a little freehand unit in your shop, because that thing is incredible. But they knew I wanted a CNC table in the shop at some point, so they sent the Cut 60 along, and um, I've been using it for a lot of stuff, because this thing will cut 7 eighths steel. 
Um, haven't got the CNC machine built yet, but huge shout out to Prime Weld because this thing's been an absolute workhorse and it's going to continue to be a workhorse. Hey, it was in the shirt. Yo, it's still in the shirt. <laughs> I hate to laugh at you. I know. I've been there. It sucks. But I thought it was <laughs> over, and I'm like, it's still biting me. <laughs> so we made a few more cuts on the back of the auto union. You guys already know I braced the doors up. I've got one bar in there going side to side. We decided to play more safe than sorry. So we're going to put a couple braces in the back. So yeah, we're going to cut a couple pieces of uh, one square stock here and just weld them in just to be safe because we've got a lot more we're going to cut out to get this thing down over the pan. Sounds okay. Yeah. This wasn't exactly the easiest to weld to as it was uh, some pretty rusty metal, but uh, they're in, they're, they're holding pretty strong. I hate welding to rusty metal, but as you guys can see, this is like, for some reason, it's over and over again. This is like the stuff I somehow enjoy working on, but we got some bars in, they're holding well. We get some, a little bit of triangulated forward to back, up and down support. So I feel a little bit better about cutting the rest of the stuff out. Look at this. Imagine just like trying to get this car running and driving it. All of that stuff is just in there. Imagine fully restoring the dang thing. <laughs> For anyone on here who ultimately finds this video who's a DKW auto union enthusiast, purist, let's say. When I said when I first bought this car that the reason why I'm gonna hot rod this is that they're really, really cool cars and I love them and I would love nothing more than to have a three cylinder two stroke one. This was not restorable. The 62 I have that's, that's leaving somewhat shortly, that's a restoration candidate. This one is a hot rod candidate because this is just the, the nightmare scenario that's just like hiding everywhere inside this car is just crazy. <laughs> what do you think? Did you get all the stuff falling out of it? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Aside from some obvious rebuilding and finessing, we ought to roll that pan in here. Yep. It's like that. All right, well, as you can see, we have, I mean, you probably can't tell on camera, but I mean, there's all sorts of dirt and rusty metal. Yeah. Stuff. We'll have space with the trans. It'll touch. It'll touch. Okay. So when I made these like locators here for the pan mounts, this like touched the top of the transmission. So I left this just in case I wanted to build firewall off of it. Yeah, definitely. You know, we're gonna clean this nonsense up. <laughs> Then we'll roll the pan and we'll set the body down to see what it's looking like. All right guys, next day, I think all we have left to do in this episode is to finish trimming a little bit more out of these rear wheel tubs. I think we're at the, the point where it's kind of all has to come out. But we keep piecemealing in case we don't go too far and we can use some stuff that's still there. So The rear, the rear tires are now. I mean, it's it's almost to the parcel shelf, which isn't too far away from the window. But what I haven't checked yet 
which I want to on camera, is the ground simulation is about eight inches. We've got it on two four by fours. Since the pan is laid out, I really wanted to simulate the ground and see if the body's touching the ground at this point. Now, ideally, I'd like the body to touch the ground with the pan not quite really completely aired out. Because this is a swing arm, it's got a ton of camber. I'd like to be able to drive it without a bunch of camber. So if we can like use room that we don't really have to put this body down over the pan a little bit more, the body will lay out before the pan does, which means the body's on the ground before the suspension is completely exhausted to its crazy negative camber. It's crazy you're this, you're this low at the body. And it's all up and eight it's inches. Eight inches off the ground. <laughs> Look at the wheel. <laughs> That's not even it. It's got more. Yeah. yeah 700 is... was crazy, but I think this is going to have just a different effect. I think it will. I mean, the tail lights are up my kneecap. I know. And it's it's, it's, it's going to be down ground. here. It's going to be down here. Yep. <laughs> How nuts. <laughs> Holy moly. That simulates the ground. The, the tail lights at my shin. That's insane. Well, let's see if we've got the pink welds on the ground. I think I think we're well beyond the ground. Dude! Wow. We can almost take this whole piece yep. out. Yep. Dude, we're so much farther than the pinch weld. No way. <laughs> we're Oh dude. We're like one inch away from being able to cut half the rocker panel out. So the plan was just to definitely cut pinch weld out so we can lay sill flat on the ground. And then I, looking at this double step rocker sill, I thought, boy, it'd be amazing to cut this out completely and bring the body down another solid two to three inches. So either we play it safe, cut the pinch welds, play it safe with 17s, or we maybe do 16s and cut half the sill off. The reason why, and I've mentioned this before, the reason why I thought about cutting half this rocker off if I had enough room up overhead near the window was so this part of the car was closer to the ground. Yeah. Because this part of the car is so much taller than down here. And so laid out, it would only be the side of the car that's on the ground and the front and rear would be up really high. So if, if this got cut in half, the whole car will have more continuity with less daylight under it when it's laid out on the ground. That right there is nuts. <laughs> this is so, look at the door handle is going to be down here. So, so yeah, like we said before, the blocks right now simulate where the ground is going to be. Which... Half of the rocker panel is in the earth now. And we still have a little bit of clearance underneath that rear window. I, I say we just cut the rockers off. What do you guys think? I don't know if we're going to do it this episode. Leave down in the comments what you guys think. Do we go 17s? It'll fill that front wheel well out better. And maybe not cut, maybe just cut the pinch weld off? Or do we go full low, all in, point of no return? Well, we're kind of at that point yeah. now. <laughs> anyway, but cut the sill literally in half run 15s or possibly 16s and just pound this thing into the pavement. Yeah, get that, get that rear spot down onto the ground. Yeah. It's crazy. Like we just spent the last 10 minutes off camera absorbing how mind blowing this looks in person, even though it's just a body over a pan, nothing's built yet. We're literally looking at just 15s with a 17550 on it for test fit purposes. Obviously we don't have drop spindles as I mentioned before. Those control arms are cranked so far forward that it's, it's throwing the caster and wheelbase way forward. What I was originally thinking was 17s, right? We can get a lot of wheel halves for that we could even cut the centers of the wheels out and keep a wide five pattern do 17s but the 700 even though it's a much smaller car is on 15s and those wheels will look massive and this is kind of i mean even though it's a much bigger car than the 700 the beetle pan that it's over has been shortened by two inches so it's a smaller wheelbase than a beetle and if we go up to 16s that might be 
our money. We've got an unbelievable amount of space up in here with it laid out. We've got a lot of space side to side and to go up more. And if we go to a 16 here, our overall diameter only gets a little bit and we'd tuck more wheel. And it's just so crazy that we're tucking 15 inch wheel in the front where it's got such a high radius. I mean, it is just unreal. Boy, this is probably it for this episode. Yeah. I mean, we've kind of done a lot. It's, it's another episode of cutting stuff out, but the stuff that we cut out in this episode is like the final cutting where we know that the body can lay out. Not just lay out, but it's in the earth if we don't cut that bottom sill off. This was, this was a huge episode for this car. It's a huge episode for the shop because Corey's here. Uh, huge things coming soon, not just on this car, but on other projects as well. Thoughts? I'm happy to be here, man, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just stuff like this is, you know, this is what we want to do. It's so nuts. So we're here doing it. <laughs> we're finally doing it. We've been talking about this for a long time. Like we're both New Hampshire boys. We've had plenty of long car rides at night talking about finally building cars together and um, yeah, pushing this channel and like pushing the stuff that we can do and continue doing stuff that we haven't seen done before, which is, which is the most exciting part for me because obviously, I mean, it's like, it's usually a harder path, but yeah. it's a fun path. I mean, I will say one thing. If I'm able to come on board fully, it's because of you guys watching this, you know? and participating in everything. It's still coming down to being able to possibly do some car giveaways, lots of merch, like, you know, as long as you guys keep buying merch and the channel keeps growing, um, this is gonna hopefully become a full-time thing for both Corey and I. And he's moved 1,200 miles away from home to just wing it with me. <laughs> we're at that stage. So we're winging it and trying to make a go of it. As I said before, if you guys haven't hit that subscribe button, please do. We've got a lot of insane stuff coming with Corey here. We've got so much more to, to work on and so much more that we're capable of. And this is step one. I mean, he literally was here two days and we started cutting this thing up. <laughs> His U-Haul truck wasn't even unpacked yet. We're already yeah. plasma cutting <laughs> metal out. So super excited. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please Please stay tuned for the upcoming episodes. We're heading to Turkey Rod Run with the 700 next week, but we're going to be full throttle, full steam ahead on this auto union here pretty soon. Um, we kind of are now. Got to get with Max at Everesto, get some stuff in. We'll start building here pretty soon. And some other projects after Turkey Rod Run as well. The next giveaway car is coming home with us after Turkey Rod Run next week. So stay tuned for those episodes because the last episode of Daytona will be unveiling the giveaway car. Again, yeah, thank you so much for all the support, all of you guys over on the Patreon. If you wanna support the channel and the shop in a bigger way, the Patreon link is in the video's description below, as well as the Bag Riders discount code and the PO Box. If you guys wanna send in some sub mail, I haven't been promoting that enough. If you guys wanna send anything in, I'll try to do like monthly episodes. As long as we get stuff in, we'll try to integrate sub mail and uh, shout you guys out once a month, hopefully, as long as stuff comes in. So that's in the video's description below as well. That's it, big things coming with this car. First of its kind. Yeah. Like, no one's done one of these yet. Seriously. So this is like literally blowing our mind because we haven't seen one yet. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.